All right, now that we got the windshield wipers off, we're gonna remove the cowl cover. And to get that, you're gonna have to, there's a rubber thing in here and it's two pieces. Um, can you see that, Jake? This bottom piece goes with the cowl and the top piece stays with the windshield. The way I did it was I removed this just up enough to get under here with a pry tool. Now that I got the pry tool there, I just, let's get another one in there. I just kind of work my way down and get it so that once, there we go. Okay. Okay, and once you can get under it, you're golden. Now you just have to slide down and it'll come right up. You just do this all the way down the windshield and it will come off. All right, now that I've pried the cowl cover from the windshield, it should be a nice, easy pull off. Come on, come on, come to Pappy. And there we go. Excuse the dirty mess, it's been sitting for a little bit. You can cut. Now that the cowl cover is removed, we're gonna have to remove the cross panel. It's pretty much this little pre-firewall that they have in here before the real one. It is, it looks like it's two pieces. There's a left or three pieces. There's a left, right, and center for the high pressure fuel pump. We're gonna re be removing the left for the vacuum pump, which will happen hopefully tomorrow. We're gonna remove the right. For now, we're gonna remove the left and we're gonna give you instructions to remove that starting with these two bolts and they look like one two three four six points these are torx heads uh we'll be back all right so we've removed the three t30 torque screws from the cross panel there was one there was one here there was one here there was one right up under here I've uh, dislodged both little connectors from the firewall. I used the pry tool to take this off of here and uh, that can just stay there, that does nothing. And at this point, this panel should be ready for removal and let's give it a shot. There it is, all right. The panel is removed and that's what we're staring at right now. And let's see this little uh, fuel pump that we gotta get at. All right, well, there's the fuel pump. And we're gonna go on now to actually removing the fuel pump. Um, that was a little bit of prep work, not too bad though. The next stage is getting this crash bar off. And it's a little black bar you see down there. It's a little black plate actually. It is attached with three 10 millimeter bolts. So um, I'm using a gear wrench to get it loose and then I'm hand uh, removing them after that and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's the next step. With the crash panel removed, we now have access to these hex bolts. There's two of these. They're below this high pressure fuel line. There's also one more bolt sitting under this guy. You can feel it with your finger. Um, my first step is going to, re to remove this, put some rags under it to catch any gasoline coming out. And then I'll be removing two of these. There's one of these, there's one right below it. And then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna remove a bolt, which I'm assuming is a 10 millimeter, but we'll see, we'll be back. So I'm now removing these long hexagon bolts. I have undone the high pressure fuel line and two of these guys have to come out along with another 10 millimeter bolt behind this guy. So I think I can get this with my hand right now. Let's see, there we go. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, oh, oh there it goes. All right, well, let me fight these two, three bolts and then I'll be back with you guys in a minute. All right, uh, the old fuel pump is off. Um, there was a plug. Make sure when you take it off, you'll have to counterclockwise twist this. All right, both pumps are off. 
Um, there's the old pump. There's the new pump. Well, one thing that you need to make sure that when you go to remove the low pressure line, um, note the orientation of it because it has to go on the new pump exactly the same with the same curve. So on mine, it was pretty much in a straight line with this high pressure inlet and it just came straight up. I think there has to be whatever, 18 to 22 millimeters between the two for a turbo and uh, something like eight for a non-turbo, which I think the fuel pump itself has a separation there. So um, just note the orientation before you go to put them back together. Um, the fuel pumps, one of, oh, two, seven, eight. Um, they do have different numbers. Here we go, the old pump, 100, 427, 30408. 190-328-10258. So they are different numbers. They look identical. Uh, I did buy a rebuilt unit from Suncoast Parts for $1,750. I get 300 and some odd dollars back for core charge. Um, they request that you put the caps on the core as soon as you take it out of the car, which I'm gonna do. And uh, here we go, we're gonna go on to the install now.